One of my favorite things that you wrote about in your blog was you talked about what you would tell your younger self if you were to do it all over again. And you wrote about the fact that you had a condo with five roommates <laughs> and you said you'd, you would never do that again. What's the best story that, that comes out of that? What, what do you think of, uh, I mean, there's got to be a lot of crazy ones that we could, we could put on the air, I guess. So we were, um, yeah, we're in Port St. Lucie, Florida. There was five roommates, one wife, one girlfriend, a dog, um, and then next door there were three other, three more roommates or three more guys who lived in the adjoining apartment next door. None of us had any money because we were in, in the minor leagues, and so we all would just cut each other's hair. None of us knew what we were doing, but we figured it's better than the 15, 20 bucks you're going to spend on a haircut. So we would all go out on the on the patio next to the next to the little lake behind us and take turns cutting each other's hair, see which one looks worse, and cut mohawks and do all these things until we realized you probably, you know, we're probably just going to shave it off. So <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. I remember having a good time doing that. You described pitching as a as an art. You kind of think of yourself as an artist. Can you describe what about pitching do you think makes it an art form? I think just the idea of knowing what you're going to get when you reach down and, and use the tool that's in front of you. With art, it's easy because you see it. You see the color that you're supposed to get. You put the color on a canvas. And with, with baseball, especially with pitching, you don't always know exactly what you're going to get when you go out there. You might throw a great pregame bullpen and go out on the mound, and it's, you know your fastball looks different or your curveball looks different. It doesn't have the same bite. Maybe it has a little bit more life to it. So for me, the, the consistency of knowing when you go out there to the mound, when you, a batter steps in the box, knowing what you're going to get, when you pull out a fastball, when you pull out a curveball, when you pull out a changeup, and being able to kind of liken that to the idea of an artist putting stuff on a canvas, it made sense to me in my head. So uh, me and my wife had talked about that a, a long time ago, and it's always something that's kind of stuck with me. You have a lot of different interests. I know you'd like to travel, you like to, uh, you like music, you play several instruments. Uh, what, where does that come from? Because I, from what I understand, your, your sister, she's in Nashville. She's a country music writer, and your family is all very much involved with the arts. How does that all come about in your family? Uh, my grandmother was a gospel singer in Georgia for years and years, coming up through the 40s, 50s, 60s. And yeah, my, my brother and sister are both singer-songwriters in Nashville. My little brother just graduated from film school, and, and I'm kind of the dumb jock who plays baseball. But we kind of all just grew up appreciating the arts in, in whatever form it was. I, you know, I grew up playing instruments, whether it was, I played clarinet growing up and then kind of evolved into guitar and saxophone and drums and stuff like that. And I don't know, it's uh, it's something that we've always enjoyed as a family, something that we've always appreciated. Our parents were just very encouraging about uh, exploring that, you know, wherever, wherever that took us. You're listening to Houston Sports Talk.